Time for our weekly League of Ireland chat, and I'm delighted to say former Fun Harps goalkeeper Gavin Cullen joins us once again. Gavin, welcome back to Highland. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Gavin, later we'll talk about the FEA Cup draw where you're on the road at St. Moctis, but you're joining us uh, just a couple of days out from a Northwest Derby where Fun Harps, of course, take on Derry City. Now, I've spoke to Ollie Horgan already this week, and Ollie has sort of played down the significance of this game uh, about the battle for sixth place that it's more important at the end of the season where, where where they're sitting. But listen, you've been involved in derby games. How big a match is this on Friday for the Harps? Oh, it's a huge match. Um, this season, I suppose, the mentality switch over the last season or two to Van Harps Derry in terms of Van Harps going, playing Derry on an even keel and, 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 and believing and getting results and and and, and getting results you know, for years and years. You know, Van Harps struggled to, 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 to beat Derry, to, to compete with them. And uh, at the minute, this last few years, that they're they're on an even keel or even an upward spiral. Uh, and at this moment in time, I know there's only a point between them in the league, but I think Harps are stronger. I think they have a stronger squad and stronger team than Derry. So there's there's no reason in the world why they can't go and take a three points on Friday night. Yeah, it's interesting to note that Harps are the last team to beat Derry. They've been in a great run since, so they have Gavin. Yeah, they've turned around massively. They seem to have got confidence since Rory Higgins have, has come in and, and, and a bit of belief in themselves. Um, I felt at the start of the season, the squad was a bit lightweight and and, and, and a bit short, you know, but they ha- they definitely have turned, turned it around a bit. Now, you do get that reaction with the new manager and obviously a lot of them will be playing for to stay there and, and they, uh, they show Rory what they can do. So that that's obviously giving them a giving the shot in the arm, but... Whether it's sustainable with that squad, time will tell. Um, I do believe Finn Harps are physically too strong for them. And up in Finn Park, I think that'll factor into the game, you know. Yeah, will that be the telling factor when it when it boils down to it? Could we have a really, really tight game where the physicality in the match is going to have a huge contribution to what could be just a one or a, a one nil or a two one victory, Gavin? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it will be tight. There's no two ways about it. There's there's there's, there's no one outstanding um, set pieces. You would expect Harps to have the physical edge, but then again, in their last home game against Sligo, it was set pieces that undone Harps. So you don't know. Derry will be lively. They're playing with a bit of confidence. They've picked up a right few results recently. Um, Harps haven't, although they got a real confidence boosting result away to Rovers last week. So um, look, if my money was on anybody. It'll be Harps, but we could be seeing a draw there very handy. Yeah, the thing about Harps is this season, when they go 1-0 behind or when they go 1-0 down, the game's not over for them as what it was like in previous seasons. There's a confidence there in the group that they can pull it back and get something out of it, and particularly when you've got Adam Foley in the form that he's that he's in, Gavin. Yeah, 100%. Uh, there's a bit of steel in the, in the squad, and, the, and there's depth in the squad, as we keep talking about, and they've loads of experience, so they know like while they're still in the game and they can hang in the game, they'll, they'll get their opportunities, they'll get their chances to to get back in and they have been taking them in fairness um as you say adam foley has been superb this season his, his goal scoring record has been first class he probably scored half of harps goals or more to this point so if he can keep that sort of form for the rest of the season no harps will stay up that league yeah it's it's a busy period there's three games in, in seven days harps have to go to st pat's on monday and then they've got longford back again i suppose two ones out of three wouldn't be a bad week's work for ollie Horgan side would it kevin Two ones out of three would be would be brilliant, you know. But I don't think they'll they'll even be looking at Monday night at this stage with with the Derry game. I think they'll be putting all their eggs in one basket to to try and get the three points from Derry. Yeah, uh, and I suppose from the same perspective, Derry are meeting Sligo Rovers on, on Monday as well. So two big derbies mm-hmm. for them that that Rory Higgins and Rafa Cotero will be targeting something from. So it will if they if they come out of it with two draws against those two sides, that will be a huge period in the season for them, Gavin. I think it would, but at the same time, I would say they would take 1-1 one, one and one defeat because they would be a point better off. So um, it'll be a yardstick for Rory and, and Raf in terms of where the players are at in big games and under pressure in a derby and stuff like that. So it'll, it'll be a real test of character and test of, of, of the players to play in these games. And if they come through it with a couple of results, like it, it, it sets them up lovely for the rest of the season as well. You mentioned earlier that you were on commentary for that Sligo game uh, hmm. along with Jeremy. Do you think Harps might have learned from the mistakes from, from that night? Because that's that's a sore point with Harps losing that game in the manner that they did. Yeah, definitely. I felt Harps were the better side over the 90 minutes. I think in the first half, uh, Tundi especially, and Barry McMee caused a lot of problems for Sligo, and they definitely shouldn't have done the break. A couple of goals to the good. Uh, missed the chances. 
Ed McGinty was excellent in the night. Um, probably stole or won the points for Sligo. Sligo looked very good. They looked strong. They looked resilient. But Harps were actually better. If Harps play like that tomorrow night, I think I think they'll definitely get the three points. Um, learn from it. It's hard to learn. I think the basic individual errors that they're conceding the goals from. So in terms of learning from it, it's it's hard to actually for Ollie or or Higgsy to to bring that into training and get rid of them. They either happen or they don't. You know, but there has been quite a few points dropped this season because of basic individual errors, and and they're probably they're probably tearing their hair out at, at this point because of it. You know. Yeah. So the rest of the games, uh, Gavin, in the Premier Division, there's a couple of crackers. So there is. We'll, we'll go to Sligo. They've got St Patrick's Athletic at, at Richmond Park. Two teams battling, of course, in in the top three. And you got mm-hmm. Shamrock Rovers who are heading to to Waterford, who are down at the other other end of the table. But listen, Sligo will be looking to bounce back after the the defeat at the hands of Drogheda the last time, and they'll be looking to do it in the style in Dublin. Yeah, surprise surprise result against Drogheda, but at the same time, Drogheda are sitting fourth, so they, they definitely have something about about them this season from coming up from the first division. Uh, Sligo have been probably the most consistent team in the league so far. They they deserve to be on top. I would say it was probably a bit of a blip, but again, St. Pat's is a, is a big test for them on Friday. If they come away from Richmond with three points, there they're, they're, they're back on, on the on the roll again, you know. Yeah, Bowes will be looking to close that gap in fourth against Drogheda. Daily Moon Park's the venue of, of, of yeah. that. That's the sort of game you could you could end up on a draw. You could see in a draw, Gavin. You could, yeah, but again, I think Bowes might turn Drogheda over. Like Bowes are, have been a wee bit inconsistent for their own league, and they were one of the top teams at the start of the season. Serious squad of players, serious ability. I think they beat Harps 4 0 down there a month or so ago, which was you know, where you would expect from Bose. But they've been up and down and inconsistent, and, and it's shown in their supposed league position or, and around Derry and Harps as well. So I think Bose could go on a run at this yeah. point. Yeah, and you expect Rovers to come through against Waterford. Would it be handy enough for them? It should be, but Rovers haven't been just as good as expected this year. They've sort of huffed and puffed and got scored late goals for winners and stuff like that. But look, I think everybody's money is still on them to go on and, and win this league, you know. Yeah. Uh, is the move by Dundalk to bring back Vinnie Perth a good move for the club? They're taking on Longford and they've really had a dreadful season. Um, mm-hmm. from- yeah. Is it a good move? Is it the right one for them? I don't know. I really don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I don't know. Well, a couple of years ago, Vinnie Perfect was within a kick of a ball of on the treble. No, granted, it was probably left over from Stephen Kenny's squad and team at that time, but they were still flying. Second season, I think Rovers they got sa- he got sacked last season. Rovers and them won the league. But what's happened to Dundalk and with the players? And it looks like they've signed a lot of you no know, substandard players for their level. Yeah. This season, um, and where they are in the league is 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 sh- super- very surprising. So there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. For Vinnie Perth to come back, was he doing a good enough job at the time to stay there? Probably. So why was he sacked, or why did he go? And for himself to come back, he hasn't worked since. So like he probably has agreements in place and whatever that they're going to back him, and hopefully they do. Um, but it's, it's a strange one that it came full circle back to Vinnie Perth and, and Raller. There was nobody else in, in contention, you know. Yeah. Uh, we'll move away from the, the Premier Division of the League of Ireland, go to the, the FEA Cup. The draw was made this week, both yourselves at Cockhill Celtic and Bonaghy United have been drawn away. Uh, you know St. Mocters pretty well. You've played them on three occasions in the past, Gavin. So what's your, what was your initial thoughts when, when the draw was made? I suppose another one away from home, first of all. First of all, yeah, away from home, um, we we suppose well documented. We don't we don't have much luck in terms of national competitions and getting home draws, but it is what it is. We have to deal with it. Um, we've probably got the hardest draw possibly. Um, Magda's are probably one of the top teams in the country at intermediate level. They do invest a lot in their playing squad. They have quite a lot of League of Ireland, ex League of Ireland players, and 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 really good young players. So. Um, tough, tough draw. Um, we don't know. It's twelve months since we played competitive football. Uh, it's real lottery to see where we're at and probably where where that where they're at as well in terms of going on a pitch. So we, we can't judge on the past. But look, we will go down there. We we'll go try and win the game. The game has to be played to a finish. There's no replays, so it'll be a different sort of mindset. Um, a lot of times you go to Dublin. And, and like to take them home for a replay and, and try and do the business at home. But 
this is this is to be extra time penalty. So it's a big test. It's a good test for a lot of our new players and young players to see the level. Look, it can go two ways. We can go down there and get a result in one, and we'll be delighted, and we'll take it into the new season. Or we go down there and we lose the game, but it might set the standard of where we need to get there and open our eyes up. So look, we we'll go with. We'll prepare as best we can. We'll, we'll, we'll get the boys ready and we'll give it a go. But it is tough. I think, by all accounts, the Leinster Senior League clubs are playing away at friendlies at the minute. Um, there, are, uh, there are a couple of cup competitions down there and their leagues. Their league actually starts the week before the FA Cup game. So that's a huge advantage. Our league's not going to start in probably mid to end of August. So we're sort of well behind in terms of preparation. We're, we haven't played any friendlies yet. We're struggling to get friendlies. Um, so... It's, it's not ideal, but uh, Bonnegui is the same. Obviously, they're playing uh, as a minute university. So there's apparently a decent side as well. So it's a tough game for Bonnegui. But look, all we can do is do our best at this point, and we'll all give it a good go. Yeah, well, listen, we wish you all the best of luck, uh, Gavin, with the, the FAI Cup. We'll be talking more about that, I'm sure, uh, closer to the time. That's the week ending of Sunday, the 11th of July. But just finally, back to the Premier Division. You're sticking with the Harps one on Friday night in the big derby against Derry, are you? I'll go over Harps one just. Um, I think just the mate of that wee physical age, a lot more experience in their squad. Um, Barry McMahon and Mark Coyle are really on top of their game in the midfield. I think they might dominate that area. And physically, the, the back four are very strong. But again, like Derry, Derry are well capable of causing not a shock, but you no know, getting a result. But I, 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 think, I think Harps will do the business. Okay, listen, Gavin, it's always good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Ashley. Good man, thanks.